let's talk about what happens up in Smithfield because I'm I'm coming into this. Unfortunately, I you know when you emailed me the first time, I wasn't able to follow up like I wanted to, mm-hmm. and so I wasn't able to track the story. But other media seemed to jump in at some point, like the Boston Globe, the uh, Providence Journal, your local paper, right? Kind yes, yeah, Patch and Valley Breeze Observer, yeah. Right. So I thought, well, it seems being it seems that it's being covered, so maybe mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't need to be first in on this, but there's more happening here. So just because people who just followed my site might not have seen it, can you just catch me up on what happened and what you saw? Sure. So um, I go walk frequently with a friend of mine um, on the scenic Stillwater Trail. It's a one mile trail that runs by the Winoskatucket River. Um, I do that several times a week. So as you're walking on the trail, uh, Route 116 with the George Washington Bridge crosses over close to one end of the trail. So as you're walking underneath the bridge, you can sort of walk, continue to walk under the bridge to get to the water, which is about 50 yards away, 60 yards away. So sometimes my friend and I will go down there just to take a little, like, just look at the water. So there are many columns supporting the bridge. So when we went down there that Friday afternoon, I I mean, I had seen graffiti before, but nothing um, particularly um, negative or ultra hate in any way, just sort of graffiti and weird things that you can't understand. So, um, I looked around and like on all of the columns that were sort of right supporting the bridge itself, cause it's like, there's a deck, whatever. About 10 columns had like this just heinous, 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 heinous racist graffiti. It was primarily racist. It was, there was a couple of anti LGBTQ things but the vast majority of it was focused on race. Right, so right, there was right. like F George Floyd, there was um, the hashtag BLDM for Black Lives Don't Matter, but there was also a spray painted series of stick figures that was meant to uh, be a representation of George Floyd being murdered. Um, it was, That's it was unbelievably That's horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, I could not, my, you know, my son, Ray, he's 15 and a half. And um, I knew he was going to see the images and he asked me to show them to him. Cause like, by the time I told him about it, they had, the stuff had already been covered up. And I'm like, you have to ask your father. I can't, like, I'm not trying, I wasn't trying to protect him from seeing it, but I couldn't, I could not bring myself to show him. Yeah, It was just hideous. No, I can understand that. That's really, I mean, that's really dark stuff. That's not like yeah. just um, lashing out or like, it seems like it's more than just kids being kids. It's like some really deep issues going on there. Uh, it was really ugly. So you went public with your story and you brought it to the attention of the police in your town? Yes. So what I did was I, as soon as I got back from my walk, I came right home. I wrote an email to the town manager and all of the town council members and actually all of the, our state reps. So Archambault, Hawkins and um, Constantino, I just CC'd everybody and said, uh, so when I was there with my friend, she's like, oh, I was here Wednesday and I saw this. Um, So then it was like, like my mind was just utterly spinning. And when I wrote the email, I'm like, I want to believe that if any town official had known that they would take this down, I can't believe it's been up for three days. In the end, I really do believe that, I think other people saw it, but I think the folks that saw it must have thought that someone had reported it and it was already known and it was going to be taken care of. I don't think that they left it up. I don't think that anybody know knew. And I don't think that they left it up. I really believe that no one knew because it was just too heinous. Like there's no way that you could. So the town did a, the town manager responded to my email within a half an hour. He sent um, public works folks or rec folks out to paint over it, but they, he also, um, informed the police because I had the wrong email address for the the police uh, chief. Um, And so the town did a great job of dealing with the physical graffiti, right? They painted it Friday, but they didn't have the right paint. It rained. 
But by Sunday morning, they had come back with the proper paint and it was all covered up. So that was, they did, they did a good job. And then the police conducted an investigation and they apprehended three juveniles um, at the Smithfield High School who apparently they, they did the graffiti. I did, they've been um, referred to the juvenile hearing board. They've been charged, but alleged, for allegedly doing it. Yes. I mean, when I, um, I was advocating through email for restorative justice for these folks, whether it was youth, whoever it was, right. Right. Um, Because my hope um, from the get go has been whatever I can do to call attention to this um, incident and other experiences of other folks in town. I want it to be um, positive outcomes, right? Not about making enemies and bashing and smashing people, but like, let's use this terrible incident and try and, uh, foster some positive change. And so have you been seeing responses responses to that in the town from the town manager and others? Absolutely. So the town man, the, the, like I said, the town was excellent at responding to the physical graffiti and getting it down. So they did a great job. The police did a great job of finding the, the folks who did it. So I, I'm, I'm two thumbs up on that piece. Um, the reality is that the town has been hesitant to speak about the incident publicly as the town or as individual leaders. Now, so I wrote the email, so all elected leaders in town knew about the incident. I also wrote to the superintendent and the school committee. So like every leader in town that I could think of, I sent emails saying this happened. so they put together a community forum that's happening on the 17th community forum on race and equality. And that's excellent. Uh, I think that the town, as well as the folks I've been talking to both sides or both folks, both groups feel that this is just the beginning, right? It's not going to be this community forum. And then we all just march along and forget about the incident or whatever. I think folks that are, that I've been speaking to and town leadership really feel like this is going to be something that we're just going to continue to work on and talk about and address in, in multiple different ways. That's the impression that I've gotten speaking to leadership. I've talked to Susie Alba multiple times. She's the town council president. So I think that the leadership really is on board with dealing with the incident, but I think that there's a lot of fear that um, acknowledging it publicly, like as the town, right? So all of the leaders now, say Rep. Constantino, have posted on Facebook or issued a press release as individuals condemning the incident. So that's great. Um, but when the town put the announcement out for the forum, I thought that they were going to do a press release that was kind of like in response to the incident, uh, da, 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 and it was just announcing the forum right. without, still without still without acknowledging the incident. So that it, I'm, I'm pleased with their response. I'm disappointed that they seem still so reluctant to actually acknowledge the incident in a very public way, but I get it right. Their leaders, they're afraid to be attacked by either constituents or other leaders. You know, you spoke about it publicly and you made Smithfield look racist because you talked about it publicly. So, I mean, I understand, I don't agree with how they're responding in that way, but I, I I'm a realist. I know what what's going on as far as that piece is concerned, right? Um, Smithfield does have a pretty long history of stuff, right? Uh, yeah, a, you probably you might know more than me, but yes. Uh, well, I know that there were Klan rallies in Smithfield way way back, like you know, what 1930s, 1920s in that area, yes. right? Yeah. I, I did yeah. a lot of this on this because. When I was working at Rhode Island Future, I covered the Doman Avenue stuff. Yes. The name for one of the founders of the KKK here in Rhode Island. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so it was a street name, which they ultimately changed the name of the street and didn't change the name of the street. Right. By basically saying, um, I thought it was kind of funny, the town council decided to uh, rename the street for everybody named Doman who wasn't this guy. <laughs> which I thought was right. a little, it, it felt shifty, but it also felt, well told me smart you know it felt like okay this pushes that back a little bit but that history in smithfield is a difficult history and there are people who live in smithfield now who probably have in their attic somewhere stored away a little 
box from their grandfather with clan robes and other clan memorabilia. Could very well be, could very yeah. well be, absolutely. And I think it's something that a lot of folks in Smithfield aren't aware of. Um, you know, Smithfield is about 98% white. So right. it'll be interesting to see how this conversation unfolds because, you know, for a lot of folks, especially folks that, um, you know, social justice issues may not be at the top of the things that they pay attention to, you know, in their lives, right? There's just a lot of, I think folks that just really are not aware at all of what other folks, Black people, people of color in town have gone through, or even the issues, right? Because if you're white and you don't really know any black or brown folks and you're not really hearing from another human being, hey, this is the stuff that I go through or here's a story that happened to me. Like, it's just, it's invisible, right? It's like sexism can be invisible to men because they don't go through it. So it's just not there, right? So I think for a lot of folks, I don't, Smithfield is not a bad place, but it is definitely conservative and it's quite white. So I think that for, I think there probably is, some pretty, I think that, you know, some, uh, there may be a few folks in town that are pretty heavy duty racist. I don't know, but I think the majority of folks are, they're kind of just don't get it. Yeah. Don't really get it. I I mean, right. And my, my experiences in Smithfield have always been pretty positive. And I even think some of the stuff that was being said um, during the Dolman Avenue stuff, went in the town council at the time, you know, it was both, good and bad people on both sides people who didn't quite get why this might be an issue people who did um i'm relatively excited about though that they're doing a forum uh who are they bringing in to like talk about racism at this forum do you have that yes and the okay so the rhode island commission on prejudice and bias the ymca of greater providence the ywca of rhode island and the anti-defamation league of new england so in talking with Susie Alba, those so those folks will help moderate, but the forum is really, as far as I understand it, is about folks in town being able to share experiences, um, you know, talk about how the graffiti incident affected them, you know, hopefully also talk about positive things in Smithfield, but it's more of an opportunity for the community to sort of discuss and process the incident and other things that it has brought up um, for folks in town. One of the things I noticed on last year during the entire like George Floyd summer protests stuff that was happening was that it moved out of urban city environments and into um, rural towns. And, you know, here in Rhode Island, I mean, we had little um, Black Lives Matter um, rallies all over the all over the place, you know, not just you know Providence and Newport where there are large black populations, but in places like Barrington and everywhere. Do was anything like that happen in Smithfield or? It th- there was a Black Lives Matter protest organized by a recent uh, alum of Smithfield High School. Mm-hmm. So uh, I had a couple of women, uh, one of whom was one of my Ray's uh, soccer coaches way back when. They contacted me. And they, even though I live in Smithfield and I grew up here, I'm not deep in the town. I'm not deeply connected in the town. So these two women are, they approached me. They're like, why don't you start a private Facebook page group, right? Because we know a lot of people who are upset about this incident and want to take action, want to, you know, have this conversation, whatever. So, um, so we did that and it's got about 200 members now. And I'm working really hard in everything. Like whenever I talk to journalists in the group, I'm kind of repeating, right? This is not about trying to criticize officials. It's not about making enemies. It's not about bashing and smashing. It's about building bridges, building trust. We want to work with everyone to make turn this into positive things for the town. I mean, within the group, um, myself and the two women that have are the the, the community connections, we've had a meeting and we've had, we've talked and we've talked about like, really, um, you know, at this point we have to be careful about messaging. Yeah. We can't just jump out and say, we want Smithfield to be a black lives matter community. Right. Like it's too radical. Right. And that's, that's part of organizing. Sometimes you've got to 
shift your message a little bit to get initial buy-in to have conversations right before you can get to the more heavy duty stuff that people, if you say it straight up, they're just going to run away. Like we're not going to be hoisting a Black Lives Matter flag at this town hall every time soon. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's way too much for Smithfield at this point. Like, and, you know, you have to be realistic. If you want to get stuff done, sometimes you have to take a sideways path to it, you know? And, you know, is it like, do you want to be right and righteous? Right. Or do you want to try to, you know, gather more folks that hopefully we can, you know, build a larger group buy-in that we can then take steps? So, so anyway, so this is generally a positive thing then yeah. right now. I mean, it's a bad thing that happened, but it did expose some stuff that needs to be talked about in your town and yes. you're using it as a positive opportunity to move forward. Trying, so, trying really hard. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, it's, a, it's good work. I mean, it's hard work, but it's good work. And uh, yes. hopefully you're not getting too much pushback from people, not too much negativity. I mean, I, def- I had one person who... Um, I went to high school with who I think that he'll probably won't, won't be speaking with me anymore. But that, other than that, I haven't had, there may be people saying things, but no one's messaged me through Facebook or anything like that saying, you know, shut the back up. Or yeah, like, yeah. Eh. I mean, it's nothing overt at all. I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, I have a, as a little experiment after the, during the protests and after the protests, I found a quote from Martin Luther King that I really liked from letter from a Birmingham jail. Right. right? And so the part of the quote that I didn't put on my sign, you know, what is a riot? A riot is like something like the voices of people that have not been heard, something like that. Right. And then, but then I put, um, what is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the promises of justice and equality have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned with tranquility and the status quo than they are about justice, equality, equality and humanity. So I made like a wooden sign and I painted all that on there and I attached it to a bench that's, I'm on a, on a, on a state road, I'm on a main street in town. And I'm like, well, let me just see what happens. Let me see if someone, you know, comes and scribbles it out or, you know, defaces it or tears it off the bench or whatever. And it's been up for, it's probably at least six months. And I see people stop. I see people read it. I see people take pictures of it, but no one's attempted to harm it in any ways. I'm quite surprised. I thought surely somebody would, you know, come along with a marker. and. Yeah, well, you never know. I mean, I think in general, most people are good. Yes, I agree with you. 99% of people are going to pass that. Even if they disagree with it on some level, they're going to go, whatever. Yeah. Very rare for a person to say, I disagree with that and I'm going to vandalize it. Right. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that really that I, I, it makes me feel good, but you know, my personal feeling is the vast majority of people walking the planet like they want to be good even if they can't be good like i think it's human nature you want to love you want to be loved like i really believe that even if you other than the folks that i think you know there are those rare people that are kind of born without a soul per se (laughs) but like the vast majority of people they want to be good right right they do even if they can't really do it yeah, I think so too. And I, and so, you know, this is a very positive thing um, coming out of a very negative thing. So thank you for your work on it. I think it's amazing. And Well, um, thanks. I mean, I'm hoping to gather up a lot of folks because it, it can't just be me, right? Like I, I mean, my, my lifestyle is great and uh, it's not like I'm working 50, 60 hours a week. Um, so that's great. But, you know, my, my objective is to bring in more folks, sort of, you know, divvy up the load, especially I want to bring forward voices uh, of black and brown folks in town. I spoke to one woman who's lived here 36 years and she's like, I'm going to follow your lead. And I'm like, look, people see me as the leader right now, but I, I'm like, I'm going to be straight up. Like I get like, I don't want to be the white woman talking about how this upsets black people when there's a black people standing around, right? Like next to me, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, you know, I'm more than happy to, if there's folks that are really energetic, like, it doesn't have to be me forever and ever. That's like the, you know, the leader of the, this movement or whatever right, the case. Right. Of course. Be. No, you no, know? that's a, uh, that's why isn't it smart? And you want to make sure you have, you make spaces for authentic voices, right? Exactly. Exactly. On the, other hand, exactly. Though, the problem of racism isn't a black problem. It's a white problem. 
Yes. Right. It's a problem yeah. that the white people have to get together and figure out how do we make it go away? Because black people don't have control over how we perceive them and how we treat them. Right. We exactly. have to get our shit together in order to make this happen. So. We have to do the work. Yeah, right. right. We but have to it, do the work. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, for look, everybody's life is really busy. Mm -hmm. there's people you know everyone's scrambling everyone's everyone's scrambling especially in this time right and it's like a lot of folks it's hard to do the work right it's hard to educate yourself it's depressing you feel guilty you feel defensive you know but people if only they looked at a little bit of history right because it really is right there if you look the 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 white supremacist the institutionalized racism it's all right there if you look 